In this extract, Bob returns home and the family support one another through the death of Tiny Tim. My little, little child, cried Bob, my little child. He broke down all at once. He couldn't help it. If he could have helped it, he and his child would have been farther apart perhaps than they were. He left the room and went upstairs into the room above, which was lighted cheerfully and hung with Christmas. There was a chair set close beside the child, and there were signs of someone having been there lately. Poor Bob sat down in it, and when he had thought a little and composed himself, he kissed the little face. He was reconciled to what had happened, and went down again quite happy. They drew about the fire and talked, the girls and mother working still. Bob told them of the extraordinary kindness of Mrs. Scroo Mr Scrooge's nephew, whom he had scarcely seen but once, and who, meeting him in the, in the street that day and seeing that he looked a little, just a little down, you know, said Bob, inquired what had happened to distress him. On which, said Bob, for he is the pleasantest spoken gentleman you have ever heard. I told him. I'm heartily sorry for sorry for it, Mr Cratchit, he said, and heartily sorry for your good wife. By the by, how he had, how he ever knew that, I don't know. Knew what, my dear? Why, that you were a good wife, replied Bob. Everybody knows that, said Peter. Very well observed, my boy, cried Bob. I hope they do. Heartily sorry, he said, for your good wife. If I can be of service to you in any way, he said, giving me his card. That's where I live. Pray, come to me. Now it wasn't, cried Bob, for the sake of anything he might be able to do for us, so much as for his kind way, that this was quite delightful. It really seemed as if he had known our tiny Tim and felt with us. I'm sure he's a good soul, said Mrs Cratchit. You would be sure of it, my dear, returned Bob, if you saw and spoke to him. I shouldn't be at all surprised, Mark, what I say, if he got Peter a better situation. Only hear that, Peter, said Mrs Cratchit. And then, cried one of the girls, Peter will be keeping company with someone and setting up for himself. Oh, get along with you, report, retorted Peter, grinning. It's just as likely as not, said Bob. One of these days, though there's plenty of time for that, my dear, but however and whenever we part from one another, I am sure we shall none of us forget poor tiny Tim, shall we? Or this first parting that there was among us. Never, father, cried they all. And I know, said Bob, I know, my dears, that when we recollect how patient and how mild he was, although he was a little, little child, we shall not quarrel easily among ourselves and forget poor Tiny Tim in doing it. No, never, father, they all cried again. I am very happy, said little Bob. I am very happy. Mrs Cratchit kissed him. His daughters kissed him. The two young Cratchits kissed him. And Peter and himself shook hands. Spirit of Tiny Tim, thy childish essence was from God. Spectre, said Scrooge. Something informs me that our parting moment is at hand. I know it, but I know not how. Tell me what man that was whom we saw lying dead. 